So what I'm actually going to talk about, uh, uh, Heureka, the Heureka team approached me and uh, watched a TED talk um, that I gave last year about seize the opportunity and I said why don't you just recycle it and, and do the same for, for internet people. I'm not going to do that actually. Uh, I made a brand new presentation with brand new pictures. But before, um, before we go there, just two or three sentences about myself. So you said already, um, I founded my first company when I was 15. I'm not sure if that company qualified for a company because it was a, not an internet business. We actually, I come from Hamburg and what we have is we have uh, those music boxes that circle around and make really awful music. And um, my first company had actually a lot to do with Lizara because what we did is we sourced those little music boxes for two euros from China. Um, we made a sticker with uh, the Hamburg web, um, um, Wappen on top, and then we sold it to the uh, souvenir places. What we didn't know is, so the first package arrived when I was 15. It was really heavy, and I couldn't carry it back to my home. So one of my best friends was sitting really close, or, or was living really close to the school, and he said, hey, just put it in, in my place and you'll pick it up uh, you know, tomorrow. So I left, I left all the expensive boxes at his place and the cleaning woman came and thought it was garbage and she threw everything away. So my first business was almost broken before we even started. But I ordered another one. It took six weeks again and then we sold a couple, but it wasn't really successful. But what I learned is... Um, that sometimes even if you fail, it's not that bad as long as you try hard and as long as you, you know, have fun on the way. And we really had fun putting the stickers on top and, and trying to convince people to buy that stuff. But um, after I graduated from university, I moved to Berlin. had lots of student debt because WHU is super expensive, LSE as well. And I told my parents that uh, I'm going to move to Berlin, don't have a job and uh, going to do something with the internet, and they probably didn't even know what that was. But we founded a company called Kazakanda, which uh, was a shopping club for, for home decor and furniture, and I'm looking actually one person who was an intern there. Um, he's doing better now, but it was fun times. Um, this was us uh, packaging my two co-founders. I was just taking pictures. Uh, <laughs> this was us packaging our, uh, our products the day before Christmas to make sure at night, and it was really cold, to make sure that, uh, that all of our customers get the products in time. And after that experience, we decided to put some heaters in the logistics room because it was winter and cold and we didn't have heaters. But it was a really fun time. After a year, um, a US company approached us just when we wanted to, to do a big financing round and said, hey, why don't we join forces and maybe you guys do Europe and we do the US. And that's uh, when we sold the year after our company to uh, Fab. I was there for another year, led the European part of the business. Um, and now i um, running and, and founded a company called Lesara. So what Lesara is, is I think it's one of the most exciting um, companies that I've been ever involved with and also I think one with the biggest potential what we are is a discounted commerce model and um, what makes us special because if you go to the website it um, maybe doesn't look that different from what, what you're used to it's just a shop selling products but what makes us special is I think three or four things one is um, we obviously have a clear focus on the target group so it's women, 45, 50, 55, who are buying not only for themselves, but also for their husbands, for their kids, for their grandchildren. So uh, they basically buy their everyday basics and also the trousers or the shirts for their husbands. So we have really high average order values. And um, the two other things that make us special is that we do direct sourcing from manufacturers. We ship the products actually from the manufacturers directly to the end consumer, so we skip all the two or three different production uh, transportations in between. And we don't have the inventory risk, so we outsource the product creation and the design of the products and the inventory risk to the manufacturers who are just happy to work with and get access to end consumers. So um, that's what we do now. But now to the really uh, exciting stuff and if you have questions about the company later on you can ask me. Um, I'm going to talk about the eight lessons 
that that uh, I had from my first two startups. And um, you know, there's so many opportunities in life, and here's you know some answers at least of how to make the best out of this. So this is Serena Williams. I don't know her yet, but I think the the first learning. Um, that I have, and the four, first four learnings are all about what to do, you know, what kind of opportunity to pursue and how to decide what to do next. And I think the first learning that I had is that um, just do something where you can really be the best, where you can really be the top 1%. Why? Because in the offline world, it doesn't really matter. If you, you know, want a kebab, a dinner kebab, you just go on the street and you're happy with just any kebab on the street. You don't have to be the best kebab store to, you know, win win customers. There might be a better kebab store in Cologne or in Munich, but you're not going to travel there for just one dinner. Um, in the internet, everything is so super transparent that you actually have to be the best in what you do. So it's probably even better to do less, but the things you do uh, be the best in than to do lots of things and maybe be just a me too product. So that's, I think, learning number one. Number two, um, go big or, or go home. There's, you know, there's just 24 hours a day and seven days in a week. And I think we all here are very ambitious and we work hard. Sometimes we don't sleep. Um, but, you know, if you do something so many hours in a week, then you make sure that when, when, when you're successful that it has an impact. Because you can also work hard 24 hours as a taxi driver. And if you get super successful, well, you have more customers, but it's no, never going to have an impact. You know, if you care about money, you're never going to make lots of money as a taxi driver. If you care about you know, your social projects and do something small, it's never going to have an impact on a global scale. I think the beauty about the internet is that you know, people at our age, with 25, 30, 20, 18, whatever, um, can already have an impact with the internet. So just make use of it. And usually, if you have a market size or a, a market, um, then the market is 10% of the market that you actually say it is. And you also don't get 50% market share, but rather 1% or 2%. So make sure that the initial market that you think your market is, is big enough so that the 1% of the 1% of the 1% also is significant. Um, this is, I think, a straightforward one. But uh, many people forget about it. I think um, you always have to have mentors in, in your life. And you have, always have people that you can trust and that trust you and that can do a referral or a recommendation. No brainer. That's, I think, why all of you are at the conference. But um, the, th the mistake that always happens and that I'm also doing sometimes and I see many people do is that you just start to build your network when you need it. So, you know, people, when they need to raise money, they say, hey, I want to build my network. And in the second sentence, they say, do you want to finance me? Because that's not how it works. You, if, you, if you try to be smart, you build your network one year or at least six months before you need it, so that you can you know, drink a beer with the investor before you need his money. Because then you, know, you buy him a beer, he's already thinking of how to repay you. And then in six months, you give him the opportunity by investing a million or two. So it's a good exchange rate, one beer for a million. So, um, and this is, I think, something that's really important. Try, try to th just think six or 12 months ahead and build your network a bit earlier on. Uh, sometimes it works, so, yeah. So I thought about uh, doing a big fat guy with a big belly stomach, but I thought that because most of you are male, this would resonate a bit better. <laughs> um, I think the beauty about the internet is that um, you always can look at data. So we always look at data and, you know, it's not that the supervisor tells you that green is the better button and then you do it, you can test it. And I, I would urge everyone, no matter if you have a mobile app or e-commerce website or whatever, to test and make data-driven decisions. But the really, really big decisions in life are never based on data. It's always your heart and, and your gut. Because um, I've never seen, you know, someone calculate the net present value of a baby when he tries to consider if, if, he, if, if a girl needs to be pregnant or if you ask your wife or your future wife to marry you, she's not going to tell a calculator, hey, does that make sense? Or maybe some, but then you don't want to marry them anyways. <laughs> um, but I think that's, uh, for, for the really big decisions, 
should I stay with this company, should I do something else, should I move to another country? Um, you don't need data, you always just have to listen to your gut, even if it looks a bit different, <laughs> the belly. Um, so yeah, so those are the first four on what to decide, you know, on to decide what to do. The second four are, are really when you've decided what to do, um, how to make sure that it's successful. So this is a wolf. <laughs> And uh, I think the, the first thing that really comes to my mind and is really important is to focus. And, um, you know, I studied at the WHU and we always had uh, these Oli Zamba speeches where he comes and talks really crazy stuff and then every second sentence is you have to have a laser focus, laser focus, laser focus. And you always ask yourself, what does he mean? But I think what, what that means is that um, Coming back to the one percent that you're, you're the best at, you know, to only focus on the things that you're the best at. If you burn the bridges, then the likelihood that you're successful, uh, that you will be successful, also increases. The last three, speed. So um, I think this is also something that that is the single most important thing uh, uh, that makes your company successful in the internet. Um, when we you know, asked for for fun, for uh, for a financing round with Kazakanda. We also met up with different founders and different companies. And um, we start when we started the website. The website looked really, really awful. Like even I couldn't navigate it. But we just wanted to ship it, get out there, and test. And actually, when we sold our company, and you know, also when we had 50 empl employees and did significant revenue. We called the other guys that we met at, uh, at the financing pitch and said, you know, how are you guys doing? And they said, yeah, we're still thinking about how the product should look like if we started with Android or iOS first. And they didn't really release the product yet. So we sold the first company and we're building now the second one and they haven't released the product. And they wanted to make the perfect product and only release it when it's perfect. But um, you should really launch your website or launch your app at, a, at the moment when you're still embarrassed that it's your app. So when it's really ugly, because then you can test, and then also, that's something that I like. I haven't done it yet, but then you can show the first picture of your website, and you see the improvement. <laughs> and you can tell, hey, that was really ugly back then. But um, really, so you always test, and you see the improvements, and I think that the speed is the most single most important thing um, for success in the first year. Um, if you're an investor and someone comes to you and pitches something and then you ask two or three months later, you know, how is it going? And he tells you that they didn't make any progress, then never invest because it's a waste of time. And this is a nice owl. So um, this, is maybe, uh, this is maybe something... I don't do the pictures, there was someone else. <laughs> um, so this is maybe something that's, that might be irritating sometimes because startups are supposed to be fun and you, know, you do lots of drinks and team events and that's all true and I think um, the job is to really build a great culture, a family culture and um, part of that is to reward people, to incentivize them, to have fun, to give them lots of challenges so that they grow but a big part of that is also to be tough and that you have to start with yourself because sometimes people think you know it's cool if you're a manager or you know lead the marketing department or the founder or the CEO, but um, these positions should be the hardest and uh, ones, and they should suck the most because it's exactly those positions when in the middle of the night the site is down, you are in charge and fix it, you know. Um, when your friends call you at Saturday night and tell you about a nice club you are doing the hiring and the business plans and the financing and you worry about all the bad stuff at night. So, um, and that's how it's supposed to be because if you are not tough and want to be excellent, then no one in the company is going to do that. You know, you have to lead by example. If you're not tough, no one in the company is going to be tough. If you accept nothing less than excellence, then no one in the company is going to strive for that. So I think you have to be tough also nice and the family and the drinks, but this is something that people forget. And if you are not tough and start with yourself, then it won't be a success either. Um, and now that, that's always the case with the light slide, all the people come in, so you missed 
the more best part, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> this is this is, I think, the the last slide, and I think uh, self-explanatory. So, if you know all the first seven things and realize that uh, it's the right thing to do, then just do it and make it happen. And sometimes you just have to close your eyes and go for it. Thank you.